What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're looking at some more r slash entitled parents. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. And a huge thank you to the members of this channel. It is truly, truly appreciated. As always, the likes and subscribes make a massive difference to this channel and they have been the last couple of days. So thank you once again for that. And if you do have a moment, please consider doing so because it really, really helps. And with that being said, let's get straight into today's stories. Much love, guys. Our next story is from Ghost of the Snow. This is a little off the content I normally post on my account, but some friends and I were chatting and this story came up. One of them told me I should post it here, so I will. This happened about six months ago when I was home from college. One of my favorite things to do in the city I live in is to visit the aquarium, where I can spend all day. The jellyfish are my favorite, but that's beside the point. At the end of the trip, I text our group chat and ask if anyone wanted anything from the gift shop, which they did. My total was around $80, which I didn't mind spending on gifts. I put them all into a bag I brought with me that day and set off for the train station to get back home. Before I got to my line, I decided to stop at this little mall type area in the city, which led to a train station, so it wasn't too far out of the way. I meandered for a bit, looking at the shops and restaurants before eventually settling for a blizzard. It was that one with a hella chocolate fudge bits in it. I can't remember the name and set my stuff down beside me. I like to listen to music and watch videos while I sit and eat, so I had my headphones on and the volume pretty loud. So as I'm eating my delicious treat, some little brat comes walking past and grabs my bag from the ground. I was in a tall seat and the bag was on the ground with my back to it, so I'll admit it was much my fault. But here is where it gets interesting. So I finish eating and go and grab my stuff, realizing it's gone. So I check every place I stopped, the bathroom, different shops, all the food spots I visited, even if it was just to look at the menu. No sign of my bag, so I start to panic. What am I gonna tell my friends? I don't want to disappoint them after promising the treasures from the big city. So as I was about to give up, I spot it, next to the aforementioned brat, eating with his family. So I go over to them and the interaction goes like this. I say, excuse me, that bag down there is mine. Thanks for finding it. The mum says, excuse me, that is my son's bag. Leave us alone and stop trying to take it. The kid said, yeah, back off, dumbass, it's mine. Already some bad parenting has shown itself. I don't mind cussing, but the kid was maybe 12 to 13 and shouldn't be insulting strangers. I say, well, no, that's my bag and I know it is. It's got all my stuff in it. The mum says, I'm going to tell you one more time to leave us alone and stop harassing my son or I call the police. Great, it's going to be like this, I thought to myself. I said to the mum, you don't have to do that, mum. I'll take care of that and wave a cop over who'd been watching the ordeal probably in case it got violent for some reason. I'm a rather larger guy with an angry resting face, so I understand. I should mention that her husband stayed quiet the whole time, probably not wanting a part in his wife's mess. The cop said, what seems to be the issue here? Before I could explain, the mum pipes up. The mum says, hi, yes, this man is threatening us because he thinks my son's bag is his, but I'm pretty sure he's just trying to steal it. Kind of strange that I'll be the one to call the cop over, but whatever, lady. Cop says to me, is that true? He said with a bit of a sigh. It probably wasn't his first encounter like this, so I said, no, it's actually the opposite. This child stole my bag, and now his mum is trying to defend him. I doubt he even knows what's in the bag. I was about to ask them to tell me, but now that you're here, officer, maybe you can act as a mediator. The cop said, all right, sure. So I hand him the bag and ask him to look around in it. After he does that, I ask the kid to go first. He doesn't get a single thing right, other than my charger. The cop says, huh, interesting. Sir, I guess it's your turn. I smile, then I list off all the items I bought, along with their price. The receipt was still in there, and I had just bought them, so I was able to remember them accurately. The cop says, well sir, it looks like you are right. If you don't mind, I'd like to chat with these folks. By now, I could see the beads of sweat on the kid's head, and the mother was getting furious. Then I turned to the kid and I said, maybe don't steal other people's stuff next time, dumbass. The mother was red in the face from anger, and the kid was on the verge of tears, because now he had a cop getting ready to lecture him and his parents would probably ground him until he's 40. But I don't give a shit. Bastards stole my stuff. Anyway, that's my story about an entitled parent. Wish people did something to correct their little klepto's behavior rather than trying to defend them because not everyone would take shit off an angry mum. I never understand how people just have... Is it confidence? Is that the word? To just go and take someone's stuff. Just steal it off the ground. I know there's thieves all over the place these days, but lots of them are out of desperation, not just because they fancy taking someone's stuff. Oh, my word. <laughs>
Our next story is from Millie2610. If you're not straight, say goodbye to family support. Ever since I was little, I already decided that I wouldn't have kids, even if the reason changed from time to time. When I was younger, it was because I had a little brother and I really hated him, so I didn't want to risk having a child just like him to take care of. As I got older, it started to be about money and comfort. Having a baby means you have to carry it for nine months and then go through excruciating pain to get it out. And then said baby proceeds to suck money, time and patience from you for at least 18 years, probably more. No matter what argument I used, all my relatives kept saying that I was too young to decide that, that I would change my mind in the future, etc. In my teenage years, I realized I was a lesbian. And recently, me and my girlfriend started to consider adopting a kid in the future for the sole purpose of raising them better than our parents raised us but we haven't decided anything yet. I realized I was a lesbian by 14 and started dating a girl at high school when I was 16, not the one I'm currently dating. We broke up after a while, but we're still friends to this day. The problem was my mum and her part of the family were really religious, Jehovah Witnesses. My dad is atheist and while his part of the family is still religious, they are accepting of gay people. But my mum's family is way bigger and more present in my life. As I got older, relatives started bugging me about if I was dating someone. It was really awkward because technically, yes, I was, but I couldn't say that, so I always answered no. When I turned 18, my aunt, she was always annoying, even when I was a kid, started setting up dates with me with all the guys around my age at church. I obviously didn't want to go, but my mum forced me to, saying, she's just trying to help you, you should go even if it's just to make her happy. So I ended up suffering through three different extremely awkward dinners with three guys I didn't know, and they looked just as awkward as me. I guess she ran out of young adults to throw at me, so she left me alone besides the usual, so are you dating someone? And the really annoying suggestive looks every time I said no. Three months ago, I'm 23 now, I got caught with my current girlfriend. I broke up with the first one in the first year of college. We're at a party and she had too many drinks, so I drove her home and gave her a goodbye kiss when I dropped her off. It was late in the afternoon, so it wasn't dark yet, so apparently a random old lady that was close friends with my grandmother saw us kissing and told my grandmother because apparently old religious people had nothing better to do. I had stopped believing in God when I was 12, story for another post, and I told my mum when I was 14. She was really upset and mad at me after that, but luckily she didn't tell any of my relatives, probably because she didn't want to deal with the drama that would follow. So the follow-up to the reveal was a wave of relatives worried about me. Jehovah Witness have this thing on how people can change. They basically think being gay is a choice and trying to bring me back to God and stuff. And then came in the aunt I mentioned earlier. She started with the same arguments as everyone else, but then came in with, but if you only date girls, you'll never have kids. Already tired of all this drama, I argued back that I didn't even want kids, and if I decided to have one in the future, I could always adopt or resort to artificial insemination. She kept bugging me for days with the same arguments about how I was young and naive and would eventually change my mind, and how children are a gift from God for every woman on earth that my life would never be complete without one, how a homosexual marriage would never bring true happiness, and how I'd die sad and alone because I didn't have kids to take care of me when I turned old. After a few days of this, she gave me an ultimatum, not the movie. If I didn't give up on my homosexual relationship, she would tell the church about it. Jehovah Witness have this thing, if you willingly commit a sin and don't show any remorse, you're basically kicked out of the church. That wouldn't be so bad, but after being disassociated, every member of the church instructed to avoid you, basically not talk to you and not give you any support until you took shame on your actions and apologized, which would mean half of my family was going to pretend I didn't exist. I was in the middle of college, so I live with my parents. Luckily, disassociation doesn't include kicking your child out, but I didn't want to be trapped in an environment where two people, my mum and brother, would pretend I didn't exist, so I decided to move out. I live in Brazil. Here, public colleges are actually good, at least for your resume. Can't say the same about the structure. So paying for it wasn't a problem. When I explained my plan to my girlfriend, she quickly pulled some strings and managed to recommend me a small apartment near my college that I could rent without selling an organ. But that still meant I was going to have to find a job and considering we're in the middle of the coronavirus outbreak, that could take forever. And then, to my surprise, my dad came in when I was talking to my girlfriend through video chat. We talked for a long time, and long history short, he wasn't exactly happy about my relationship, but it was less because it was with a girl, and more because I never told him, and said that as long as it was making me happy, he would support me. I showed him the apartment I was planning on getting, and he said he would pay the rent for me for the rest of my college years. He then repeated what he used to tell me when I was a teenager, 
As long as it's something for your education and future, I'll pay for it. I don't think I need to describe how happy and relieved that made me. We now talk with each other daily and I started contacting his side of the family through video chat about my situation. They also support me and one of my cousins said she would help me with furniture and stuff. I'm currently trapped in my house due to quarantine while I ignore several calls from people from church. But once this is all over, I'll be able to finally cut some people out of my life and never look back. I, now, I'm going to be pretty ignorant by saying this probably, but I don't know much about Jehovah's Witnesses. But I've always sort of looked at them as a bit of a cult. We've had them come to our door and stuff and I don't... I just I, I quickly shut them down and they go on their way. But Jesus, they're pretty persistent. Our next story is from This Requires a Burner. I just saw a lady get tasered for trying to snatch a woman's face mask to give to her child. I argued with my husband about whether or not to post this because I'm pretty sure this will make the local news and I didn't want to burn this account just yet. But he won RPS, so here we are. Prepare yourselves, this story has layers. We're at the dreaded big box store picking up potting soil because we're going to do DIY ourselves through the isolation. Things aren't crazy here yet, but there's still a two per customer limit on the majority of items. I assume this means everything, so we're getting two bags of each for a few different types of soil. My husband is loading the last of eight bags on our cart when I hear her. I know it's Karen just by the level of unnecessary outrage in her voice. She says, are you kidding me? Not a lot of people out here in the garden center, but we all look at her. I was almost disappointed to see she didn't come with a requisite haircut. She actually looked like a frazzled mum, her kid tugging on her hand and an overfull handbasket of groceries. And I had a moment of, girl, I feel you. But damn it, she was pointing at us. Karen said, you can't buy that many, you are hoarding. My husband says, yeah, we can. We're getting two each. Karen says, oh, you don't fool me. I know what you're doing. My husband says, so do I. Fuck off. I'm just sitting there imagining all the ways I'm going to rock his world tonight. Well, Karen huffed at that, spun around and yanked her kid back inside to go complain to the employee working at the register nearby. Now, we already paid for our items. The employee had come out and scanned the bags earlier and he could easily see our cart from inside. So being finished, we pushed the cart out of the garden center into the parking lot and then the automatic doors open behind us and I hear, now they're stealing, just great. We load the soil into the car and turn around to bring the car back and look at plants. By the time we get back, Karen has given up on trying to convince the employee we're the Bonnie and Clyde of dirt and is now trying to negotiate skipping somebody in line. She has a child you see and her hand basket well, it's just so full and heavy. Could she please just scooch right on in here real quick and it'd just be an extra second, she swears. The woman Karen is trying to skip is young, maybe college age and wearing a face mask. Not a medical mask, but the stretchy kind you wear while riding a motorcycle or when you're skiing. My husband has just informed me it's a neck gaiter. The mask is black and has scary like wolf teeth on it. That honestly made the girl look like somebody you should not fuck with, even though she was wearing a Gap t-shirt and flip flops. Mask girl was just shaking her head no, and that's all I got as we dropped off the cart. I browse, pick up a couple of plants, and we head inside to wait in line. Now is showtime. Karen and Mask girl are near the register facing off, no pun intended. From the looks of things, Mask girl finished her purchase, and Karen stopped her before she could leave. I don't know if she grabbed her or anything, but Karen was still holding her full hand basket, so she hadn't checked out yet. Well, she hadn't paid for her groceries yet, because clearly this woman had checked out. Karen said, but you don't even need it now, you're leaving. My son could get sick because you won't give it to him and he needs it. Mask girl says, hell no, you can't have it. Back off lady. Karen then says, but my son really likes it and it's obviously made for boys anyway. Why would you even want to wear something so scary? Mask girl says, because I like it and it has my germs on it. So why would you want to put a stranger's mask on your kid? Ugh, why are you being so rude? You wouldn't let us go through the checkout first and now you're making my son very upset. Mask girl says, that's your problem, not mine. And then Mask girl turns to leave, while Karen manifests the biggest balls ever and grabs Mask girl by the back of her mask. Let me make a side note here. When all this is going down, we're all just standing in line and watching. The register is still going boop, 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 as our employee scans items. But otherwise, we we're all just inside this hypnotic bubble. But when Karen reached out towards Mask girl, it was like the bubble popped and made everything crystal clear. Not slow-mo or anything, but I absolutely felt hyper-aware like Spider-Man. Karen reaches out, people on both sides of me inhale loudly. Karen grabs the mask and yanks. A lady on my right yells and my husband steps forward. So getting laid tonight, too much info. Mask girl tucks her head down and she turns to Karen like a pissed off bull with a bright red and shiny new target. I think Karen was gonna say something like, don't walk away from me or something, 
but all she got out was, don't and crack. I looked around because the noise was so loud, I figured the roof was about to cave in. But out of the corner of my eye, I see Karen spasm and drop to the floor, wreathing. Little mask girl had a fucking taser. I don't know when she pulled it out. This tiny little flashlight looking thing, but she laid Karen out with it. And not one of us moved what felt like forever. Like we were frozen. And then it was fucking bedlam. Security guard shows up, more employees show up. Mask girl was chilling like she's been through this before and knows what comes next. The kid is screaming that Wolf Girl killed his mum, even though she's groaning and sobbing on the floor and clearly not dead, but maybe wishing she was. The people that had been in line with us were all talking at once trying to tell the security guard what happened. We hung around just witnessing the insanity for maybe two minutes before Karen just started choking out demands for an ambulance, the police, a lawyer, the mayor, restitution and reparations. My husband made eye contact with an employee and just got a thumbs up when he puts plants on the shelf and pointed towards the door. We got the fuck out of there. We drove home in silence until my husband parked the car in our driveway and then just burst out laughing. Neither of us had seen anything like that before. We live in a small beach town. People are super laid back and mellow. Karen was anything but and I hope to never see her again. Wow. <laughs> Fair play to little mask girl though. And as someone in the comments says, she is the hero Gotham deserves and needs right now. <laughs> as always guys, a massive thank you for the time out of your day. It is truly, truly appreciated. If you have time, if you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting that like as it makes a massive difference to our channel. It truly does. And consider subscribing if you're new. Why the hell not, right? Thank you for being here once again, and I will see you in the next one. Much love, guys.